Hello, I'm Jill at ingvid.com and today's lesson uh, we're looking at shortened forms of uh, longer words um, which are called abbreviations. When you make something shorter it's called an abbreviation. That's a very long word for something that's very short, okay? So uh, you will see these, for example, in a text message on your mobile phone or maybe in, a, in an informal email or on a, a, a forum online on the internet where people are being quite um, chatty and maybe a bit casual. And also they may be in a hurry and they don't want to type the whole word. They just want to put a shorter version of um, the word or group of words. So people use these for that. So um, let's have a look, shall we? Uh, this might look rather strange at first, but I hope it will begin to make sense as we go through. So some um, of these shortened forms um, are based on numbers because if you have this number, two, it can also mean um, the word T-O as well as the number two, T-O or T-O-O. So it's often used to represent one of those words. So if, if you say this, it's 2B. You've got the letter B and the number 2, 2B. Two it's the verb to be, okay? So that's a very quick way, especially in a text message um, if, or in, maybe in Twitter as well, where you're limited to a certain number of ca characters. Um, that's another reason why people shorten these. So to be. So can you read this one? To day. So that means today. On, on this day. Today. Okay. And then this one. To morrow. So it's not spelt the usual way. To morrow. But again, that's to make it shorter. Morrow. It's a kind of phonetic spelling. Tomorrow. And this one, to night, tonight, this evening, tonight. Okay, now can you think what this one might mean? F to F. So this is two in the middle. If you think of your face, face to face. So if you want a meeting with someone or a lesson, you don't want to use Skype, you don't want to use the phone, you want to see them face to face in the same room, person to person. So that's face to face, okay? And then this one, these, are, these letters we're covering later, but again the two appears here, G to C U. If you listen to C U, if you say the letters C and U, it's C and U, okay? So those letters sound like those words. So they are used to represent those words. And the G uh, means good, good to see you. Okay, good to see you. Right, that's easy. Okay, let's move on to four. So again, four, the number four, can also look like that word, F-O-R, four. So, four, get, four, get, to forget something. When you don't remember, you forget. And this one, B4. 
B4. Okay, B4. Not after, but before. So that's another nice short one for a longer word. Okay, next one is eight. Now this is a rather funny one, but it's very useful. So we've got here CU, like this one again, CU, or eight, er. <laughs> so CU later. Okay, the eight is part of the word. Later. See you later. It's very, very quick. One, two, three, four, five characters. There are five letters in the word later on its own. Here you've got C, U, later, just in five characters. Okay. This one is M, H, mate. Um, I don't know if that word is used so much in America or Canada, but in the UK, people say mate when they mean friend. My mate, uh, it's an informal word for friend. And, uh, oh, how are you doing, mate? How are you, mate? It's a very friendly sort of word to use. So, mate. And this one, can you guess what this one is? Eight. Wait. Wait. Can you wait? W eight. Wait. Okay, so they're quite useful. Right, let's move on to the letters then. So B, we had already to B. So that's the verb to be, just be, be. Be, cause is the word because. Which takes a long time to write, as I just discovered there. Um, be, cause, be, cause. Because a lot of pronounce this word a lot of people pronounce this word because, because, very quickly, cause. People also put cause, not just because, but they just put cause. Um, because when people are, are speaking, they sometimes say cause instead of because, uh, just if they're speaking quickly and informally. So that's because. This one, a bit different. The B doesn't stand for B this time, but can you guess what it might be? A something day, a special day that comes once a year? A birthday. So that's birthday. Okay. Now, this one is another different one. Um, F is friend. So can you guess what the B stands for? There are two possibilities, actually. This is used for two different words. It can mean best friend, my best friend, or it can mean boyfriend, boyfriend. OK, so you can only tell from the context which one it is, best friend or boyfriend, unless they happen to be the same. If your boyfriend is your best friend and your best friend is your boyfriend, then that's, uh, I don't know, that's easy then, <laughs> not confusing. <laughs> OK, and then this one, this is again very different. If you're invited to a party, uh, that you may get a printed invitation or it may be in an email, BYOB, and it's an instruction to bring something. Bring, can you, what do you take to a party usually that begins with B? Something to drink. The container that the drink comes in is a bottle. So bring your own bottle. Okay, right. 
let's move on. So we've got C again, which we had before. CU, as we had before. And also CD together can mean could. Could. Um, and also we don't have it written here, but um, S D or S H D can mean should, could and should. That's the more usual one with S H D. So could, could, okay. D often means do, the little verb to do. So do you, do you want to meet, whatever. And this one is a useful one. If you're um, decorating your house, um, you, you buy, you're, you're doing it, uh, you're buying the paint, you're buying the brushes, you're buying rolls of wallpaper, all of that. Um, you might be cutting pieces of wood, all sorts of things. And it's called DIY. And there is a shop called a DIY shop where you buy all these things and it means do it yourself meaning you don't pay a professional to come and decorate your your home you do it yourself okay but people always just say diy some people love diy they spend their weekends doing diy so um, we don't often say do it yourself. It takes too long to say um, and even longer to write. OK, so next one. E. So if you say this and you say it, um, th this letter, the way Americans pronounce that letter, not the way British English people in, in the UK, we say Z for that letter, but in America and probably Canada too, I think. No, they don't, sorry. Um, in America, they say Z, okay? So if you say E, Z, E, Z, that's easy, easy, okay? And then this one, if you say it, it becomes fairly clear what it is. Enough, enough. Um, because enough has a lot of letters in it, it's quicker to write it phonetically. Enough. Okay. And then finally, for this column, G often means good as we had here, good to see you. So good could be just G on its own or GD. And G night, good night. And then this one, we had BF and now we've got GF. So BF was best friend or boyfriend. This one is girlfriend, just girlfriend. Okay, girlfriend. Okay, so let's move on to the next column. Uh, Q, if you say the letter Q, uh, it sounds like the word, that funny word, uh, where people stand in a line waiting for something, maybe in a shop, waiting to be served. They're in a queue. So someone might send you a text message, I'm going to be late, I'm waiting in a queue to buy my train ticket or something like that. So they just put Q. Then if you say this letter, it's R. So R U or U R. So it's the verb to be the form R. Okay? And then you, we've had before, so see you, do you, are you, 
you are. Okay. V means very, very. So V and then VG, very good. Then W, that can mean with or, yes, it can mean with. And then WD, like the other ones we had here, could and should, WD means would. So one W with WD would. And then this letter, if you say the letter, it's the letter Y. So if you say Y and it make it a question, it's that word, W-H-Y. So Y, maybe with a question mark, means why, why? Um, or just the letter on its own could mean you, just the letter U, or the possessive your, if it appears with an R, Y R your. Okay, good. Okay, so now we get on to some really interesting ones. Um, these are very similar. Um, I don't know if you can guess what they are. The F A I K part is the same in both. But there are two alternatives. There's A, F A I K, and S, F A I K. I don't know if you've uh, seen these at all, but they mean as far as I know. Okay, so that's as far as I know, or so far as I know. They mean the same thing, it's just a different way of saying it with as or so. As far as I know, um, the, um, you know, the chief executive is visiting tomorrow, as far as I know. It's what you say when you're not sure, uh, you don't want to sound too definite about it, but as far as I know, that is what is happening tomorrow, so far as I know. I may be wrong, but that's what I've heard. So that's what they are. And then this one is a little bit jokey. Um, I-M-O and I-M-H-O. When you're giving your opinion, O is opinion. What you think, your own opinion about something. You're saying, in my opinion, or in my humble opinion. So, humble. So, it's where you don't want to sound very um, too strong about something. Um, it's your opinion. You don't want to push it onto other people. Uh, you want to tell them what you think and you're being very polite about it in a jokey way, a little bit with the word humble. In my humble opinion, this is what I think. So, but in my opinion, it is not so jokey. Okay, and then when you give your opinion and, and people can see that you've been, you know, nice about it, you're not trying to impose it on them. Okay. Right, so next one, FYI. Sometimes people even say these letters without saying the words, and it's often used in business. If someone forwards you an email, they might type FYI at the top. Um, for your information, or it could be for your interest. So it's for information or something you might be interested in, for your information, for your interest. Okay, right. So then just finally, the third column, uh, you can probably guess that this is short for possible, possible, just pos, 
PPL, that was one I didn't understand for a long time. And then I suddenly realized, ah, it's, what do you think it is? It's people. Okay. People. P, 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 O. It's just the P, P, L. People. Okay. And then this one also is probably quite easy to guess. Speak. Speak. Okay. And this one you can probably guess. Sorry. 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 When you're saying sorry to somebody. And this one is probably quite easy. Tux is thanks. Thanks. Okay. And then this one is very funny. Um, W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G. And if you haven't seen that before, it's what you see is what you get. So if you're buying something, for example, a car, what you see in front of you, if you pay the money, if you buy it, what you see there is what you get. You just see it and if you like it, that's what you're going to buy. What you see is what you get. Okay, it's a bit funny, that one. Um, okay, and then lots of X's. You can have all sorts of numbers of X's, depending on how enthusiastic the person is feeling. Um, XXX uh, means kisses. Okay, kisses. And also this one. Uh, because especially um, actors do this, uh, they go mwah, mwah, like that. So that's the sound of someone kissing, mwah, <laughs> like that, mwah. Okay. And then finally, to end with, if you're not already asleep, um, this one means zzzz when you've fallen asleep and you may be snoring a little bit, making that sound. So I thought that would be a good one to end with, especially as it's also the last letter of the English alphabet. So, okay, there we are. Um, I hope that's been useful for you and maybe taught you some vocabulary as well as we've gone along. So if you'd like to go to the website, ingvid.com, there's a quiz there to test you on this. Also, if you'd like to see two other lessons on abbreviations, uh, there are two very good lessons, one by Ronnie and another by Alex. So do look out for those because they have covered some different uh, examples which I have not covered here. So do have a look at those. So thanks very much for watching and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.